honoring a pioneer in iron homeostasis, ash advocacy efforts on Capitol Hill, addressing clinical practice guidelines, new ways to connect and network, and hear what attendees are saying about the annual meeting. That's all coming up on Ash News TV. I'm at Highland for Ash News TV. We're sharing video highlights from the American Society of Hematology's annual meeting. Ash attendees gathered for a grassroots network lunch to share updates on Ash's recent advocacy efforts on Capitol Hill. This is a grassroots uh, network luncheon, and the goal is to generate enthusiasm to advocate for NIH funding and to also uh, advocate for. Uh, uh, reimbursement issues related to physicians. The grassroots network enables ASH members to become active politically, communicating with Congress and the White House to share the society's messages and concerns specifically related to the National Institute of Health budget crisis. This is really a big crisis and it's, we're all going to be affected because um, the future health care of the country is going to be impacted by this. We won't be prepared for the next epidemic. We won't be prepared to uh, uh, take some of the new therapies, no, new genomic uh, research, and put it into uh, action at the bedside. So we have to work with Congress to make them understand the importance of NIH funding so that we can get better funding for uh, this very crown jewel of research in the country. The network welcomed prospective advocates into the conversation and urged them to join the effort to contact their elected officials. Ash Bridge Grant actually is a wonderful opportunity for me to secure uh, more funding. This is a truly great event and the importance of it cannot be overstated. The lunch discussed legislative and regulatory priorities, as well as previewed the Society's 2014 advocacy agenda. Two pioneer hematologists, Ham and Wasserman, were recognized for their achievements with a lecture given in their honor. Thomas Hale Ham and Louis R. Wasserman were both pioneers and past presidents of the Society. The honored lecturer is traditionally a distinguished researcher from outside the United States and the Iron Lady of Hematology from Italy, Dr. Clara Camascella, continues the tradition with her vision of the brave new world of iron metabolism in her lecture, Iron and Hepcidin, a story of recycling and balance. If you are unable to increase the hepcidin production when iron increases, uh, iron overload develops in the body and uh, iron is toxic, so there are, are several prob clinical problems like uh, cirrhosis in the liver or heart failure if iron accumulates in the heart, endocrine uh, disorder and so on. So it's very important to have uh, the correct amount of iron. Dr. Camichella is honored to be giving her lecture to help others working in the new iron age. I think that it's a great honor because uh, I'm at the end of my career and so I can tell to the people what uh, uh, I, I, why I was involved in this field and uh, what were our most important uh, development and uh, achievement. Another important topic being discussed at the special symposium on quality are clinical practice guidelines. I'm Rachel Kopchak with Ash News TV and I'm joined now by the co-chairs of today's quality symposium where they discussed the clinical practice guidelines. Now tell me why is this so important to be discussed here at Ash? Well Ash has a really exciting new program launching to enhance the development of clinical practice guidelines so that hematologists can improve their care of patients with blood disorders. And this was really the culmination of a year-long strategic planning process to say, well, you know, what is the role of quality in hematology, quality of care, and how can we better serve the needs of our patients? So really, this symposium was um, creating the framework and providing discussion for going forward with the development of guidelines. And so over the next few years, you're gonna start seeing more guidelines being produced by the ASH to help uh, 
providers take better care of their patients and then to create a research platform that that can exist in. So we wanted to educate the audience on that issue and what role they might be able to take and why this could be a really helpful thing to a hematologist, both from the perspective of ca patient care as well as developing their research career around participating in this process. And what were some of the special themes discussed here today? Sure, so we, we had uh, three terrific speakers today. Our first speaker was Dr. Holger Schunemann from McMaster University, who is an international expert in methods used to develop guidelines. And so he talked to us about uh, the history of guidelines and uh, the, the sophisticated way that the methods have evolved over time for the development of guidelines. But guidelines, when they exist on paper, are, are fairly worthless unless we can put them into practice to improve care for patients. And so our second speaker, Dr. Lee Schwamm from Massachusetts General Hospital, uh, who has extensive experience with uh, the American Heart Association's Get With the Guidelines, talked about how to take guidelines and bring them to the patients to improve quality of care. And then our last speaker, Dr. David Garcia, a professor at the University of Washington, talked about some of the challenges that we face in developing guidelines. Uh, one of the challenges that he discussed was the management of conflict of interest, so that the parties involved in developing the guidelines uh, uh, are able to manage their conflicts so that we can produce a, a high quality, unbiased product. Thank you so much, both of you. It was a very well-rounded symposium here regarding the clinical practice guidelines. I'm Rachel Kopchak for Ash News TV. Taking a coffee break, why not explore the array of research posters in the poster halls? One of the most wonderful things this year is the large number of abstracts we got. It's actually the second largest in our history after our 50th anniversary, was, which was in uh, San Francisco in 2008. And so um, we had a problem how to present all these abstracts and yet have a high acceptance rate and let our science be presented because it's so wonderful in a small space. And so to solve that, we actually have two poster halls this year. And so part of the abstract posters are going to be in Hall G and part of the abstract posters are going to be in Hall E. It represents the cutting edge of, you know, this is like really uh, early stage development. A lot of them are preclinical stuff, a lot of them are clinical stuff. So it's a good mixture of both. So normally you go to these meetings, you learn a lot about the current therapy, but you also learn about, about a lot of the preclinical stuff where people are, you know, using the latest method, using ta new novel targets that hasn't been tested anywhere else. So that's why it's very interesting and exciting to be here. It gives us an insight into the next, you know, um, uh, the next breakthroughs, the, the, the next trials that are coming out and, and some preliminary results that, that we can take back and, and incorporate into our own practice back at home.